information to help us make better nutrition decisions and better food decisions. The, uh, where we're going to start the webinar series is with the question of organic versus conventional. Organic foods have gotten so much attention uh, lately. We, have, we see more organic foods in all grocery stores, not just specialty grocery stores. It used to be you had to go to a specialty grocery store or a specialty farm to find organic foods. We see even big box stores like Walmart and BJ's and Sam's Club carrying lots of organic produce. Uh, we have an, the increased demand by the consumer for organic foods is higher than ever before. USDA supports organic farming. NC State, and NCA and NC State University all have organic farming programs. So it's, a, it's, it's big business. It's big in agriculture and it's Consumer demand uh, for organic products um, is higher than it ever has before. But is it better for you? Is it what you and your family should be choosing? And those are the things that we're going to discuss in the next few minutes together um, here on this webinar is whether organic or conventional is what you want to buy for you and your family. So we're going to talk about different products that you can find in the grocery store that would carry the organic label or you would have the choice to choose between organic or regular, and, and produce is certainly the one we think of first, of organic produce, organic fruits and vegetables, but we also have organic milk, and we have organic meat, and we're going to talk about all three of those different categories. We're going to start with, with um, produce first, but before we start with exactly talking about is organic produce better, let's define what organic means and what that organic label means when you see that on a food. The USDA organic label is a part of USDA's organic program, and it is run by USDA and governed by USDA. So you cannot use the USDA organic label unless you are certified as an organic grower by USDA. So that's a process that a grower would have to go through or a packer would have to go through to be certified USDA organic, and USDA governs that, um, that program. And this is part of legislation that was passed to protect the consumer from having something be labeled organic it really wasn't organic. So if you see the, the USDA organic label, it means that that product is 100% organic. Um, so you'll see that organic seal. The, the, the use of it is optional, but certainly if they go to the added expense and um, to, to be an organic farm or organic producer, they're going to want to use that uh, organic label as a marketing um, technique. So if, if you see that, it says it's 100% organic. Um, that means that all of, the pro all of that product or all of the components of that product are organic if it says 100% organic. If it just says organic, it means that 95% or more of the ingredients, if it's a mixed ingredient um, package, um, have to be organic. So you think of, of things like maybe a cracker or, or a, a, a package product that might have multiple ingredients, and almost all of the ingredients are organic and some aren't, or maybe some are not even available in an organic form. If 95% or more are organic, they can carry that organic label. Um, they can also say made with organic ingredients. They cannot put the USDA organic label on a food, but they can say made with organic ingredients on the label, and that has to have 70% organic ingredients. Um, and then if it's less than 70% organic ingredients, they can label an individual item in that packaged food as organic but they can't put on the front of the package or the back of the package or the side of the package for that matter that it's, that it's an organic product. In the ingredient label, they may say organic corn or organic soy or, or organic wheat, but they can't say that the whole product is organic because indeed it's not. It just has an organic ingredient. So what does organic mean as far as how that food might be grown? So we see here the difference between conventionally grown um, foods and organic foods, and in this case we're talking about um, produce, so this will be fruits, vegetables, and grains that are grown conventionally. The agricultural technique is, that's used is they would use chemical fertilizers to promote plant growth. They would use chemical insecticides to reduce pests and disease, and they would use chemical herbicides um, to manage weeds. Um, this is the traditional or conventional way that foods are grown um, around the world of using different chemicals to protect that plant from, um, from uh, diseases or from insects and to promote plant growth. In organic farming, they use different, pro different processes that are, are used to protect the environment, generally. Uh, natural fertilizers, such as manure or compost, are used to promote plant growth. Um, insects and birds or traps are used to reduce pests and diseases instead of using a chemical insecticide. Organic pesticides are 
are used um, for um, uh, protection against weeds or uh, protection against pests. So I think that that's um, a misnomer that organic doesn't use any pesticides. They can use pesticides. They just have to be organic pesticides. And then they also use crop rotation, hand weeding, mulch, or organic herbicides to manage weeds. So they, they use different uh, processes that would be not using any chemicals, organic or otherwise, um, to, uh, to promote plant growth. So now we get to the question of, of we, know we, we know what organic is, we know what it looks like in the grocery store based on using the USDA organic label. Is it better? And, and we first have to define what does better mean. And so we look at the five different categories here on the slide. Does it taste better? Is it better for me nutritionally? Is it better for the environment? Does it have less pesticides? And is it safer with respect to food safety? So let's talk about each of these um, in some level of specificity based on fruits and vegetables and grains to start with and say, is, is this what, let's compare conventional versus um, organic and see if it's, it's really better. Taste is one that um, is, of course, very subjective. If you think a food tastes better, I might not, or I might think a food tastes better, and you might not. So if you're basing your purchasing on taste, and you think the organic carrots taste better than the conventionally grown the carrots, then you're done. That you, you should choose the organic. Um, I, I use carrots as an example because this is one that, that's um, true in my life. I think organic carrots that I buy taste better. Um, and so I, I always buy that organic product just because I think it tastes better. Now, there are other reasons why I might buy that product as well as we get deeper into this list, but that is definitely um, a decision that I make based on taste. If you think um, organic broccoli tastes better than conventionally grown broccoli, maybe you're going to eat more of it or eat it more often, then that's great, or if your family likes the way it tastes better. Um, so taste is very subjective, and if, if that's something that you and your family enjoy an organic product because it tastes better, by all means, um, that's a good decision. Um, looking at nutrition, I think if you asked 100 nutrition professionals, is orga are organic foods more nutritious, you're going to get a variety of different answers. There's been a lot of research done on the nutrition quality of organically grown fruits and vegetables versus conventionally grown fruits and vegetables. You're starting off with the most nutritious foods in the grocery store anyway. So you're, you're sort of really getting at the nuance of is, it, is, a, is organic or conventional uh, more nutritious because they're already the most nutritious foods that you can buy. Um, like I said, there's been a lot of research done in the area of organic foods healthier. Are they more nutritious? There was a, sur a study that I'm highlighting here on the slide that came out uh, about a year and a half ago that sort of definitively, for now at least, defined whether organic foods are more nutritious. And they came up with, they looked at hundreds of pieces of research um, over the last 10 years to look at comparing conventional versus organic produce. And they found that their conclusion was that the published literature lacked strong evidence that organic foods are significantly more nutritious than conventional. Like I said, um, fruits and vegetables and whole grains are already the most nutritious foods in the whole grocery store. So saying that, that organic is more nutritious or conventional is more nutritious, in my opinion, is, is not really um, how you would make your decision anyway, whether you would choose organic or conventional. They are all very healthy and very nutritious. The environment. So are you're looking at whether conventional or organic produce or, grown, or organically grown foods are better for the environment. Well, the whole organic movement started as a, a way to protect the environment and a way to grow foods in a, a, a way that conserved soil and, and land and water resources. And so, uh, you know, it, it is um, arguably uh, a protective factor against the environment. So when you look at acre per acre, um, at the, um, the impact on the environment, organic easily wins out. Um, where that, that conversation gets a little more complicated is you may have less yield per acre uh, for an organic farm than you would for an, a, a conventional farm. And this varies based on what's being grown. But I will say the gap is being closed on a lot of, a lot of different foods. Fruits, for example, fruit, organically grown fruit is almost the same as conventionally grown fruit as far as, as yield per acre. So we're beginning to close that gap a little bit. But if the environment is a concern of yours, and of course it is for all of us, as we want to leave this earth um, as, as good as we got it, or even better for the next generation, 
um, that would be a concern in a way to um, a reason why you might want to spend the extra money to get the organic produce if it was available for you. So the next is sort of um, the, the big kahuna and that's pesticides and, and looking at are you exposing you and your family to more pesticides if you choose conventional over organic foods. The same study that I talked about when we were talking about nutrition looks at um, exposure to pesticides in organic versus conventionally grown foods. Um, as well as, as nutrition, and they came up with the conclusion here that consumption of or, organic foods may reduce exposure to pesticide residues. And so this is, again, a reason that a lot of consumers are choosing organic is that you are exposed to less pesticides. Now, I'll say in, in all the studies that they looked at, the, even the conventionally grown foods, the pesticide residues in those foods were below what FDA um, requires, so they were below that standard. Some people think that standard is too high. That is debatable. But what's not debatable is that the organically grown produce in this organically grown foods in this study that they looked at um, did have significantly less pesticide residues. Um, I will say that even the organic had some pesticide residues because pesticides are sprayed um, in a way where they, uh, an organic field could become contaminated with pesticides that were being sprayed on another crop that was not organic. So you're still running the risk of getting some pesticides, but you are getting less if you're choosing those organically grown um, fruits and vegetables. And what about food safety? For some reason, the food safety slide is, is not coming up, so I'll just talk about it. Um, food, some people choose organic because they think it's safe. And when I say food safety, I'm not talking about pesticide exposure. I'm talking about food safety like foodborne illness or exposure to um, uh, something in that food that might make you sick. Um, there is absolutely no difference in food safety risk based on whether the food is organically grown or conventionally grown. You're ex exposing yourself to about the same risk um, food safety wise. This gets at how the food is, is grown and packed and stored and processed and how it arrives to you in the grocery store and how you handle that food um, in the home environment. Um, can dictate uh, sometimes that, that food safety much more than uh, whether it's grown organically or conventional. So we look to um, how we can make better decisions, which is what this whole webinar is about, how we can make better decisions as a consumer um, about what we do buy, um, whether we buy organic or conventional. And organic is not available in every um, fruit or vegetable or grain. Um, it might not be available in your area or it might not be affordable. And so if you were going to take some of um, your food dollar and put it into organics, where would be the, the best place to put it? And the Environmental Work Group, um, which is a not-for-profit that looks at, at food decisions um, and helping consumers make better food decisions every year, comes out with what they call the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And these are the dozen, and they call this the Dozen Plus, but they put a few more foods on this list this year. Um, the, the, the foods that they analyzed that had the highest levels of pesticides, again, well below what FDA um, allows, so these foods are not dangerous, they're just saying that these conventionally grown foods have the highest level of pesticides, and you see the foods here on the list that they uh, found to have the highest level, and they are in, in order of um, highest level of pesticides to lowest in this, in this sort of dirty dozen list. So you also can think about what you and your family consume most often, and you might want to put your resources in that. If you buy apples every week, and you have children, and they're eating children, they're eating apples every week, and you see that apples is on the sturdy dozen list, and you have apples in your um, grocery store that you can buy that are organic, and you can, and they fit into your food budget, that might be something that you want to invest in. On the same hand, they have the clean 15 or the the 15 foods that had the lowest levels of pesticides. And yet might not be something you want to make the extra investment in to purchase organic. Um, and you notice that a lot of these are, are foods that have either a skin that you don't eat or a very thick skin. I don't think there's much many um, people eating grapefruit skin. So you, once you get that, that outer edge off, um, you have a food that has a very low pesticide residue, same for avocados and onions, et cetera. So you see the foods on here that you might not want to make the extra effort to um, go the organic route. There's the food safety slide. Just got put in the wrong place. Uh, since we've already talked about food safety, I'll go ahead and skip this for us. This is a question that I get asked a lot. Well, should I buy organic or should I buy local?
because a lot of local food is not certified organic. And remember back when we talked about what does organic mean and, and you had to be certified as an organic grower or organic packer um, to use that organic um, label. A lot of local farms are smaller and don't have the resources to be certified as organic. So they may use organic practices in their farming, but not be certified organic. Um, so you just want to talk to the local. It's a good thing about buying local. You can talk to your local grower. You can ask them the practices that they use, and then you can make your decision based on how they farm. I know that the CSA that I'm a member of is not certified organic, but they use many organic practices, including crop, crop rotations and, and that kind of thing that, um, that are really good for the land and good for the environment. And, and so I'm very happy to, um, to use them as, a, as my vendor for local produce. So now that you know the facts, you can think more about when you when you go to the grocery store, um, whether you want to make that investment in um, organic produce or stick with conventional. And again, it, it's based somewhat on um, what's available. But I would be remiss as um, a nutrition professional if I didn't say this and say this very loudly. Eat more fruits and vegetables, even if they're not organic, even if they're not local, even if they're not fresh. Even if you, if you and the participants you work with or you, you and your family can't afford fresh vegetables all the time, eating canned or frozen is great. If they're not local, they're not organic, okay, just eat more of them. So don't let um, perfect be the enemy of good. And, and if you can't afford organic, can't find organic or local or even fresh, eat more fruits and vegetables. We know that that is that is the, the thing that almost every, I'll, I'll go, to the, go to the extreme and say every nutrition professional can agree on is that fruits and vegetables are the powerhouse in the grocery store for many reasons, including the nutrients they provide, the, um, the satiety level that they provide, the fiber, the, the micronutrients. So eat more of them. So we've talked about a very specific choice about organic versus conventional, but the first choice that you should make is to eat more fruits and vegetables. So let's leave the the topic of produce and go to milk, organic or conventional milk. I will say that milk is the most tested food in all of the grocery store, organic and conventional. Um, it has more standards on it, more testing that's required of, of any, any other product in the grocery store. So right away, you know you're getting a wholesome food regardless of whether you're choosing organic or conventional. So let's define what organic milk is. Organic uh, milk can only be labeled organic if the cows that produce that milk have been fed exclusively organic feed, have not been given, given synthetic hormones. Of course, they already have hormones in their body, but they've not been giving, given synthetic hormones. They've not been given antibiotics, are kept in pens with adequate space, and are allowed access to the outdoors. Now, uh, keep in mind that is access to the outdoors. That doesn't mean that they're free range roaming around. That could mean literally that they can see the outdoors. They can walk out there if they so choose, but um, they at least have access to the outdoors. So that's what defines whether something can be labeled organic milk or not. Then we go to look at nutrition. Well, nutrition is pretty easy on uh, uh, looking at, at uh, milk. You can take a, a package of organic milk or a bottle of organic milk and turn around and a bottle of conventionally um, produce milk and, and turn around. And, and of course, the nutrition is identical. So you wouldn't purchase organic milk for um, a, a nutrition reason necessarily um, because they're identical, very similar, if not identical. Organic milk is more expensive than conventional milk. Um, not, it's come down in price um, over the past three or four years. It's getting closer to conventional milk, but it still is 40, 50 cents a, a half gallon more than um, than uh, conventionally grown milk. Now, even with all of these um, standards that are already on uh, conventionally grown milk or conventionally produced milk, organic milk uh, purchases is skyrocketing. More and more people are buying this. They just feel it is a more wholesome item, item in the grocery store. It's a more wholesome item for their family, and they want to make that investment of 50 cents or more um, for their family to get the organic product. I can tell you that I buy organic milk because I want to support organic farmers. Um, so I'm not in the illusion that I'm drinking a, a, a safer product or a, a, a more nutritious product, but I'm supporting those organic uh, farming practices. But if it's not in your family's budget, um, conventionally produced milk is um, certainly a wholesome food and safe and healthy for your family. 
Now we move to um, organic or conventionally grown meat. Um, and it's going to be hard to, to think about eating a steak after seeing the sweet face of this cow, but, um, but we'll talk about or organic or conventional meat. And so let's, um, let's go ahead and define what that means. Organically produced meat is produced with no antibiotics, no growth hormones, and the animal has to be fed only organic feed from, um, it's defined I think as the first, from the first month of life. So as soon as they're weaned from their mother, they have to be fed um, only organic feed. Now that does not mean that that animal was pasture raised or grass fed. It could be feedlot produced meat, which is a, which is a, a term used in the beef industry, which means it's a, a large lot where they have a lot of cattle that are fed grain. As long as that grain is organic, they can be called organic, they can be labeled organic meat. So if you're interested in moving away from the feedlot meat or the, the, the grain fed uh, meat, you have to go to grass fed. And so what grass fed means is that the animal is fed grass only and that they had access to a pasture during the grass growing season. So that's a more natural way of growing um, or, or producing beef, producing meat. It's certainly um, kinder on the animal since they are, that's what they were meant to eat was grass, not grain. Um, so you have grass fed. Now you see the intersection there of organic and grass fed. You certainly can have organic grass fed um, beef um, and, and that would be both. So you would have, then they would have to be raised in a way that was, that fit both of these criteria. They would have access to grass that was only organic, organically produced, and they would have all the other things listed. Um, on the organic label there. There is a big difference in price in, um, in meat, much, much more disparate in difference in price than, than produce. Um, so if you're looking at organic beef um, or, or an organic grass fed being the, the top of the, um, the, the list as far as price, much more expensive, not as easy to find as organic produce. Um, so if you're looking at um, moving away from sort of this mass produced feedlot meat, um, then you're looking at moving into a grass-fed or an organic grass-fed um, product. Looking at poultry, um, they have similar um, distinctions as far as organic. Um, organic poultry defined is, is raised with no antibiotics, fed only organic feed, and has access to the outdoors. Now you don't see the, the hormone listed here because federal law prohibits the use of hormones in any poultry, organic or conventionally produced. Um, so if you see a, um, a label that says produced without hormones, they didn't need to put that on the label if it was poultry because it couldn't be produced with hormones. You also see on the label, of, uh, especially with poultry, the word natural a lot. Um, that is the most loosely defined term that USDA has. It really doesn't have a definition. And but a lot of, of producers use the word natural to mean that they didn't use any antibiotics. So you just have to read really carefully to say it, it says if it says natural produced without the use of any antibiotics, then that probably means that they don't have some of these other categories or other criteria to be labeled organic. But they want the uh, the consumer to know that we raised this product without antibiotics. So it it really um, uh, makes you a better consumer the more you read the label and understand that you might not have to go all the way to purchasing organic if you have some concerns about antibiotics being given to the, the poultry that you're, um, you're eating. You might could, could find a, a, a less expensive product that might be, not be labeled organic but might still have the not, no antibiotics. Um, and then you have the free range and of course you see this a lot in chicken, free range chicken. This is the animal um, was fed grass only um, and had access to, to, um, to in this case, uh, field, not really a pasture, um, during the grass growing season. So they're sort of out there pecking the, pecking the ground as chickens are supposed to do, finding their, um, their food um, as they will. So let's talk about the nutrition of um, organic, uh, grass-fed, free-range. How do these differ? So we'll start with, with meat, and I'll go back to that slide um, to talk about the nutrition uh, differences. The, the differences between organic and conventionally produced um, meat or beef in this case is really going to depend on whether what they're fed. If they're fed just grain, just like a feedlot, um, feedlot uh, cow, cow, cattle would be versus organic and conventional, there's not going to be very much um, difference. But if you go to the grass-fed 
you're going to see a little bit of difference um, in the nutrition as far as the omega-3s, but nobody's eating beef for the omega-3s anyway. That's not a, it's not a good source of omega-3 anyway. But you are going to see a leaner animal with the grass fed um, just because that's, uh, that's going to produce a leaner animal. So you're not going to get that nice marbled steak that we're so used to in the United States. You're going to have a much leaner product um, than if you had a, a, a grain-fed animal, whether it's organic or conventional really doesn't matter as far as nutrition, but the grain is going to produce that um, more marbled um, type beef. So I will say that grass-fed is, uh, if you're used to that marbled beef like we're used to in the United States and you had a grass-fed product, it is going to be very different tasting because it is so much leaner. Um, than the, uh, than the conventional uh, product. Uh, same goes for chicken. Uh, for the free range, you're going to have a much, chicken is pretty lean anyway, but you're going to have a much smaller um, chicken, a much, uh, a much leaner, um, uh, a much smaller bird and much leaner. Um, but the nutrition from the antibiotics, uh, excuse me, from the organic state uh, versus organic and conventional is going to be very similar, very, very similar. I want to talk just for a few minutes. We're going to open up for questions in just a second, um, but I wanted to let you know about our upcoming uh, series uh, for Eat Smart Move More Way Less Online. And for those of you that are already participating in Way Less, good for you and, and keep going. And we're thrilled to have you on this webinar. But if you've not participated in Way Less before and you're interested, you see on the slide um, how to register online, and it will um, it will put you in the right place depending on what category you're in, whether you're a state employee or or work for another company. So I want to pause there for questions. For those of you that are, are, um, are familiar with the system, um, you can go ahead and, um, and type, um, type in the chat box. Are these questions that people are learning yet? So I have, um, I have some questions that have already been asked. Thank you so much for um, these questions. I'll just take them, uh, take them in order, let's say. Is there a percentage of organic ingredients referring to the number of different ingredients or the amount by weight as they are required to list in order? I'm, I'm, I'm losing this question here, so I'm going to go back um, to the first slide, which is where this information is, um, and we can talk about that as far as percentage. So this question is based on, on what, what are we talking about, a percentage of organic ingredients? Um, it is by weight, so 95% or more organic ingredients means 95% by weight, and the same for the other um, the other listed there. So you couldn't have just um, a ton of something in there and it wasn't organic, but everything else was organic, but it was just a tiny bit, and call it um, call it organic or either made with organic um, ingredients. Uh, well, there's another question: Does the nutrition comparison compa companion, if you mean comparison, include looking at micronutrients? What do they use to define more or less nutrition? Nutrition. Thank you for that question. That's a very good question. So I'll get to that slide, and we can talk about that. They did look at some micronutrients. Um, uh, of course, there are some nutrients that would not even be detectable, um, and they looked at using a statistical analysis, and was it statistically significantly different? Um, and so this is a way that, that researchers use to say, where the numbers may be a little different, but is it really meaningfully different? And they found there was no meaningful difference. I will say, and, and I was remiss to say this um, when I showed the slide before, is that we are constantly doing more research on nutrition value of produce, organic and conventionally grown. So this is an emerging literature. This is an emerging um, area to, to, uh, to look at based on nutrition of, of conventionally grown produce and and, uh, and organically grown produce. But think about the nutrients in that fruit or vegetable are a, a lot of times dictated by ripeness, um, not, so, not in this, in the literature shows not so much in how they're grown organic versus, um, versus conventional, but there are plenty of other reasons to, um, to purchase organic if you, if you so choose for your family and if you have the, um, the extra money in your food budget. Um, what's the year, month that was the annals of internal medicine statement about nutrition versus conventional? Thank you, Debbie, for that question. This is a 2012 article, and um, since I know who you are, I'll shoot you an email with the exact um, the exact date of that uh, of that um, publication. I will go ahead and add it to that to this slide, and this presentation will be um, put up on 
um, the WLS website for everybody to see, so I'll go ahead and add that. So there's more questions here. Let me um, take just a second to look at these. Um, Jeanette asks, what's the best way to clean fruits and vegetables to remove pesticides? You really can't remove pesticides by cleaning. You can, you can wash the outside, certainly, if there's some pesticide on the outside and you wash it with just water, um, then it's going to remove a little bit of that. If you remove the skin, you might remove a little bit more, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to remove the skin. Um, so it, it's, it's really, a lot of that, the pesticides are going to be systemic in that fruit or vegetable, so you're not really removing um, a lot if you're going to, uh, if you're, if you're washing it, unless, like I said, it's just there on the outside. Um, it was most fruits and vegetables are washed at least two or three times before they get to, in some way, shape, or form, before they get to you um, in the grocery store. Uh, Fernand said she was delayed in logging on, in which she emailed the participants a link to the reporting. Absolutely, we'll put the link. We, we won't email you a link, but we will put the um, the presentation up on the Wayless website, so you can watch the beginning. Um, if you were delayed in logging on, and we'll also put the PDF of the PowerPoint um, up there as well. Let's see, there's a question about poultry. The notion of access is tricky. I've heard that this can just mean opening a door to the coop, but no real room. And you are absolutely right, um, Tara, that that is, um, uh, that is a, I don't know if you call it a loophole or something that is a, uh, it's easily gotten around not having, we'll get to the poultry slide here just for a second um, so we can take a look at that. Um, there we are with our chickens. Is that if you have free, a free range chicken, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is, you know, your, your uh, vision of this country farm where there's chickens out pecking in the, um, in the dirt. It can mean that the, the door to the coop is open two or three hours a day. They can go out there if they want. Um, but but may not. So it is uh, it is so it, it, if if that's really a concern of yours and you and it's an animal welfare concern that you have, I would encourage you to find a local um, farmer that you could talk to and ask them how they raise their chickens and how they um, give their chickens access to the outside. Someone asked, will washing the food with soap remove most pesticides from the dirty twill? No, it, it will not. Um, and keep in mind that. They call them the dirty dozen, but they still have pesticide residues below what FDA recommends for fruits and vegetables. So I, I don't, I want to, I want to uh, end unless someone has um, more questions. I'd like to end on the most important slide in the whole presentation, and that is this one: is that even though we have taken a very specific topic of should I choose organic or conventional, uh, in this case produce. The most important thing to do is to choose to eat more produce, eat more fruits and vegetables and whole grains, even if they're not organic. They call them the dirty dozen, but they are far from dirty. They are the, the powerhouses of the, of the grocery store and what we should have um, the predominance in our diet is, is plant-based foods. Even if they're not organic, even if they're not local, and even if they're not fresh from the produce aisle, if they're in the freezer case or if they're down the canned foods aisle, they are the they are the, the powerhouses of the grocery store and what you should be um, having lots more of um, in your diet, especially um, especially this time of year when they're so plentiful. So I want to go to the last slide in the presentation and just preview what we're going to be talking about next time um, in Nutrition Decisions. Um, the next webinar will be October 10th, again at 12 o'clock. We hope all of you can join us or listen to the recording after. Um, that topic will be just as controversial as organic versus conventional, and we're calling that the big fat debate. And I know that some of you have heard the, um, the, uh, the headlines from the New York Times, butter is back. And uh, we'll, we'll look at that. We'll take a deep dive into whether or not butter is back and whether that's a healthy thing for our diet or whether we should be consuming, as you see here on the slide, the monounsaturated fatty acids that we see in olive oil. And, and, uh, and avocado or polyunsaturated fatty acids that we see in other vegetable oil or saturated fat from coconut oil. So we'll look at all of these um, in great detail. Any closing questions before we sign off? Let me end by giving you my email address. If you have any follow-up questions, 
and we want to make sure that all of your questions get answered, uh, especially on this topic of uh, organic versus conventional this time. My email address is carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, underscore, done, D-U-N-N, at ncsu.edu. I thank you all for participating. Have a great uh, weekend, a great week. Enjoy lots of fruits and vegetables this summer, organic or conventional. Thanks a lot.